<sighs> hey you guys, disappointing morning. Uh, if you guys already follow me on Instagram and you saw my post, I was one set short this morning. So I wanted to make this video and I'm actually sitting under the way right now, uh, 465. Just letting you guys know that it's not always gonna be your day in training. I know um, I have this planned out accordingly, you know, with reasonable weights, weights I've hit in the past, with hopefully hitting some PR beltless sets on the last two weeks. Well, you know, I'm still on track to do so. It's just frustrating because, you know, I tripped at the finish line, 465's on the bar. It's not feeling bad, okay? I can kind of feel this knee just a little bit, uh, but it wasn't like really hindering me. So I'm like, I could do this, I can get it, you know? And I'm doing the set and they're a little bit slower than normal, but I'm able to engage, flex all my muscles, be stable, smooth presses, reasonable, okay? A 30 pound jump to 495 is in the zone at that point until my fifth and final rep. You know, I hit it and I come up about halfway and it was already slow out of the hole because I started to feel this, so it slowed me down and I was conscious of this knee. And then from there, you know, from the halfway point up at the lockout, then I felt a strain in the knee. Is it severely injured? No, it's agitated, it's a strain. Um, overuse, you know, with work, lifting and so on. All the accessory exercises that you guys have seen me do, they helped tremendously. Everything was good. I was literally just one set away. Honestly, if the 495 would have been this 465 set, would have been fine, would have been A-OK. -okay. I know I'm not gonna be injured going into next week. I'm not gonna be injured going into next week, even though I finished with 465. It's just frustrating that I was one set away. But, you know, it's a reflection on life. We don't always get what we want, and we can only control what we can control, okay? And in this moment now, I'm controlling my emotions, how I'm gonna handle this, am I gonna go for it, am I gonna play it safe, so on and so forth. Obviously, you guys know, I took the safe route. I don't wanna take the safe route. I wanna push myself because I see that goal. I want that goal. I wanted that 495 for five. It was definitely there. Strength is there. Technique was there. It's just one limiting factor. And the thing I can control is how I handle the situation. And you guys already know what I chose and how I'm handling it. Old me, younger Paul, would have been like, fuck it, you live once. You gotta hit this number today because it's live or die, you know? And that's a great mentality and all, but it's a roll of the dice at that point. Um, I've won some, I've lost some, you know? And I, I became a really good lifter during that time and was able to compete at a high level because of it. But reacting emotionally like that doesn't take you to the next level, okay? It's not a sign of weakness by stopping. You know, it's just being wise. It's a sign of maturity. Okay, and I would like to think that I've matured as a person, as a lifter, um, in, in all aspects. You know, as you guys know, I've had to take a step back in order to move forward. And the past year, you know, I stepped away from social media a little bit um, and just really focusing on myself, focusing on, you know, reinventing myself as, you know, I've talked about in the past, not just as a lifter, but as a person as well, because lifting and life and all that, they correlate. Okay, with me, it, it just, it's a good outlet for me. It's a healthy outlet and I have to keep it a healthy outlet. And the way I would turn it into a not healthy outlet is letting those emotions get the best of me, tear me up, going after this weight and possibly seriously injuring myself and having to sit out weeks at a time, months at a time, whatever. So it makes sense to me to try it next week for one less rep than it would be to force myself to push through the pain which I've done in the past, and like I said, it, it's worked, and it hasn't worked. But I see a better lifting future for me because of this, and it's transferred over to the, my life, you know, in the business realm and everything else, and whatnot, to control what we can control, you know? So, like, you, you have on my left here, your right, um, the things that we can control, and then on my right, your left here, things that we can't control and we have to meet in the middle. Okay, it's easier said than done because, you know, as human nature, you, you want to control everything. 
you want to control this, you want to control that, but you got to understand like, all you can do is control what you can control, but then you have to focus on certain things that you can't control and how you're going to handle them. That's why we want to meet in the middle. If we focus too much over here, anxiety is going to drive us nuts. If we focus over here, anxiety is going to drive us nuts. So we got to fit in the middle here and work on the present and everything else. And the present is this goddamn weight right here being my last set. Okay, like it, it, it's tough, it sucks. I'm gonna be the one to tell you guys that. You know, I'm living it. That's why I'm recording all this stuff so that you guys can see, you know, through my daily logs, my lifting videos and everything, what I'm going through. And not every single lift is gonna be my best. You know, I, I'm fortunate to have some fantastic ones and I've had some good days in a row and you're gonna have a bad day. But it's how we handle it and it's how we move on. One thing you definitely don't want to do is do the, oh, woe is me, and you want to sit back, hide in the corner, cower, and whatnot, and not do anything and slip into the depression, okay? That's a bit dramatic. I understand this is just lifting right now, but, you know, it plays out that way. How you handle something this small is how you're going to handle something super large, super important, okay? Just because, you know, this is little doesn't mean you're going to handle another situation totally different. It could, you never know. But usually how you react emotionally to one thing is how you're gonna react emotionally to another thing, all right? And you know, as you mature, as we grow, then we learn how to handle these things, okay? To close this, I am gonna handle this, I think the appropriate way, the way I don't want to. Moving on, doing my accessories. This will be, you know, on the video here that you guys are gonna see. Uh, going through what I was able to fit in before I have to go to work here and whatnot. But either way, I hope it helps you guys. And I hope that you see some of the lifts and you guys have any questions and such for me, feel free, reach out, enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks, guys. All right, so that was enough of that talk. Um, on to the workout here. After... Uh. I did my long and extensive warm up trying to make sure that I was going to be warm enough for this and that there wouldn't be any issues. And regardless, there was an issue with the left knee on, you know, second last set. Besides the point, this is my first set here with 315. Um, usually I only do six sets, um, which ironically I finished with six sets today, but it was going to be seven if I was going to get to that 495 like I was hoping for. But Starting with 345 and 315 being one of my warm-ups, I figured, hey, you know what? It might as well just do it. It's just kind of an awkward jump, you know. But so yeah, started with 315 for five. Now it's 345 for five. And as you guys have noticed, I do 30-pound jumps with my squats and my deadlifts. I found that that's the more appropriate jump, I think, for those lifts. And then my upper body is 20-pound jumps. So also depending on what program I'm on, but when I'm doing these progressive sets, I just found that that's, you know, what is most appropriate for me and everybody else is different. But, you know, this one here is 375. Um, I also know coming up, um, I do forget a set um, or at least hit the play button. Ironically, I forget to do that. Um, while trying to show you guys all these workouts and such, but regardless, you know, I get 405, you know, on the next clip, it's 435, I believe that I forgot the video, but, you know, I can kind of feel my knee, though, doing some of these, it wasn't excruciating, it was just, you can, you know, like, if you got, like, a slight strain, slight discomfort, you know, you can feel it, it's just, um, yeah, it's something, you know, it's bearable. I just know on that very, very last rep, it got the best of me. And, you, you know, we'll see here in the video how on that fifth rep, I drastically slow down and it looks like I hit a wall. Well, that, that's basically it. My left knee was like, not happy. But it is what it is. Other than that, I mean, 405 is moving here. All the weight was moving really well. Everything was feeling great, feeling on point. Um, now we're going to skip the 465 here. Just because, like I said, I forgot to get that 435 on video. But we're going to see the uh, slow and uneasy fifth rep here. But, I mean, it's not like it was moving super fast. 
but you know, I was hit my depth. Everything was on point. There were smooth presses. Uh, feeling that little bit of strain in the left knee, but you know, I was still getting a good press. I was like, okay, it's not hindering my press or anything like that. But once I hit that fifth rep, like I said, like you guys will be seeing here soon, um, I hit a wall, you know, and I start stabilizing more, as you could tell there. Just trying to, you know, I guess counter that knee at this point, get in a good position, get a good press out of it. But that fifth and final rep there, it was just, it was, I mean, you can kind of see a little bit of a pain face. Just wasn't happy. So I had to be smart and I had to make sure that I didn't further any injury and call it quits, I guess, you know, and move on. Sucked. You guys heard me talk about it, but I did it. Either way, just doing some lunge step ups here, just working on getting my quads engaged and getting that blood in the knee. It doesn't hurt doing these at all. Uh, it's just, it is what it is. You know, I had to drop down and get these accessories in, which I did. Um, and I know I did three sets of five, each leg with that. Then I have these RDLs here. So this is just body weight, one legged RDLs. I'm just working on some stability and some mobility here. Um, I do five on each leg, and then I pick up some 30-pound dumbbells and just do just your traditional RDL, and I do that for 10. Um, I only do this for two sets just because of time. There was only so much time I had left in my training here before I had to go to work, which, eh, you know, it happens and whatnot. But either way, um, that was my workout. If you guys have any questions for me, you guys know where to find me. If you don't know where to find me, um, you can follow me on Instagram. It's just Paul Yeoman, all one word. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel here. Um, we also have the underscore basement gym on Instagram. Please give us a follow there if you don't already. Um, we'll be posting more content of members PRing and lifting and representing the, the gym and wearing the gear and entering in to win possibly a free hoodie here by the first of the year. But either way... Hope you guys liked the video. Please subscribe and I'll be talking to you later.